Turn to your neighbor and tell them to listen to this poem. Turn to your other neighbor and tell them to listen to this poem. What has happened to us, church? Why do we do what every person that stands behind a mic says without investigating the fruit first? The truth hurts, but I'm here to slice you up with a sword, mangle into poetic words so that we can start being real Christians again instead of jigaboos. Yeah, I said it. Jigaboos. People with a holy facade like a white face painted over their negro colored heart sitting in the back of their busted inside tap dancing, shouting, and singing for human praises like our ancestors who did it for quarters, nickels, and dimes. You are still enslaved, church. Instead of getting excited about the glory of God, we'd rather be entertained like human iPods touched by everything that makes love to our five senses. If it looks, smells, tastes, feels, sounds right, it must be right, just right, wrong. Just because you feel tingly on the inside with someone is singing or speaking just like your heart is bleeding pop rocks doesn't mean that they're anointed. It just means that you're emotionally inclined to base reality on how you feel instead of the truth. When you go to the grocery store and pick up a piece of fruit, you examine it to see if it's rotten, right? You smell it, turn it around in your hands, press your fingers against its skin to see if it's ripe. But even though we are called to do the same thing that every person that stands behind a mic and claims to speak on behalf of God, we don't because of our need to be entertained instead of the need for our flesh to be beaten up in maimed. We continue to sit back and eat rotten fruit. When will we stop buying preachers that are expired? But if you don't study to show yourself approved, it makes perfect sense for you to approve of any and every fool that preaches heresy, sprinkle with a little truth, because sound teaching doesn't seem to matter anymore as long as he can preach good, right? Hand gripping the mic, screaming into the crowd, breathing all hard in between every word, like he's having a heart attack, organists and drummers already in position to play the soundtrack to this spectacle that we want to call worship. But even Apostle Paul said that his preaching was plain and void of clever and persuasive words so the listener's faith would not be based on human wisdom but in the power of God. What is happening to us, church? There are preachers and prophets in the pulpits profiting off prophecies that profit me. Nothing. No correction, no rebuke, no call to repentance, just a new house, a new call, more blessings and even more reasons not to submit and you wonder why your ears can't stop itching. Because your body has been infected with sin and Jesus Christ is your prescription. But instead of you cleaning out the old man residue with Q-tips covered in conviction, producing repentance, you rather hide behind your old Negro spiritual worship songs because you can't stand the master's whippings. These men, these men have pasted cotton balls over their gray fur to fool the masses. Matter of fact, some of them are your pastors. You think they are sheep and inside they are ravenous wolves with evil eyes skinning the faith of the saints with their teeth. Don't blame the wolf for biting its prey, little red riding hoods. You're the one that lets your discernment cease. I hear more about me being the head and not the tail, being above and not beneath. Then I do about the exegesis of Jesus. These preachers are feeding us Dr. Phil sermons disguised as truth. Oprah Winfrey philosophies. How many of you actually believe you can speak things into existence? Yet when I search the scriptures, I see that that was a power that belonged to God and God alone. They say, I speak calm. You say, I receive. They say, I speak healing. You say, I receive. God says, die to yourself. <laughs> Silence. It's crazy how the highest praise is only sent up when our flesh is getting pleased. What happened to our flesh getting weak? What happened to us sincerely falling to our knees and asking the Lord to show us the parts of us that make him want to heave? But we'd rather throw up our hands and puke out unknown tongues without an interpreter to even tell us what spiritual door the tongues broke through from. I'm done holding my tongue. I'm sick of biting my lip. No wonder. Unbelievers can't see the truth like Stevie staring at the results of a lie detector test because without order and the church the blind stay bound and confused and as long as the body of Christ continues to live like walking flashbacks of Amistad and roots those with spiritual blindfolds choking the death out of their souls will never be able to see God because the one being exalted is you. But my God, when I be mocked again for you, you became a slave for you, beaten and maimed for you, whipped at least 41 times with lead tips ripping into the back of the creator of skin. 
His holiness, colored with your sin. And they drink from the water fountain of God's wrath that has tasted as hateful as a cup full of Jim Crow. And until you die on a cross for all of mankind, no human being on planet Earth will ever understand true segregation like the son experienced when he felt forsaken. Christ died so you could be a new creation. So loose yourself from that noose saturated in religion. Are you listening? You are unknowingly dangling from the tree of the Pharisees, but even the Pharisees saw that going backwards and forwards like a sea saw would only give more room for God's light to expose their hearts. So choose which side you will be on because no one can serve two masters. In 1865, the 13th Amendment proclaimed that slavery shall no longer exist in the United States. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ, a death abolished our spiritual shackles and chains, but too many of us have gotten comfortable with our religious traditions and superstitions that we remain enslaved while still proclaiming that we are free. Many of you don't even realize your jigaboos. People with a Christian personality oblivious to your slave mentality. Even Harriet Tubman was quoted in saying, I freed a thousand slaves and I could have freed a thousand more if only they knew they were slaves. So. Instead of tap dancing and shouting to the beat of your own drum, get on your knees, put your face to the ground where all you can see, hear, taste, and smell is repentance and belief. And all you can feel is a spirit of God, million man, marching you into an underground railroad, not filled with those that have been trained. But those of us who are willing to discard our religious chains and trade in our quarters, nickels, and dimes for true change because our Savior is here and he has came to set the captives free.